Hello everybody and welcome to IntelliPact. In this video, I'll be talking about one of the most important AWS services called as Amazon S3. Let us take a look at the agenda that we have for this video. Firstly, I'll be introducing what S3 is, followed by some of the core concepts of S3. And then I'll be talking about storage classes within S3. And then I'll move on to the security in S3. And finally, I'll wrap up the video with some of the use cases where S3 is used. But before I begin the video, please make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates. Let us move to the first topic of this video, introduction. Now, uh, S3 stands for Simple Storage Service since it has three S's, so hence the name S3. And uh, by the name, uh, it obviously is a storage service by AWS. It is an object storage service in a folder structure provided by Amazon Web Services. So by objects here refers to images, text, blob files and many other uh, objects. You can also store virtually anything on S3, but it is tailored towards more software oriented objects like source code, media content, email, spreadsheets, etc. And Amazon S3 was one of AWS's first services which came out in 2006. The main features of S3 are scalability, data availability, security and performance. So uh, if your uh, requirements uh, requires you to store more data on the go, so you will get scalability options available from the S3 service and your data availability is guaranteed through this service and you also get security and performance as well. So I will be talking about these features in depth in the up upcoming slides. And lastly, uh, some of the use cases of S3 include data lakes, uh, wherein you store uh, large amounts of data and it is also used in cloud native applications and web applications. Now, this is a simple illustration of how to use the S3 service. First, the data is taken from resource, any resource, whether it can be from a server, it can be from a database or any application. This data is then stored in a bucket a bucket is nothing but a container for objects stored in S3. You can store any number of objects in a bucket up to 5 TB and you can have up to 100 buckets in your account. These buckets will give you many features to work with. Some of them are control access to data. Now what do you mean by control access to data? So it includes writing IAM policies uh, that specify the users that can access specific buckets and objects. So it is basically an authorization and authentication method. Next you can do uh, optimize cost with storage classes. So S3 uh, storage classes are purpose built to provide the lowest storage cost for different access patterns. Then you can replicate data to any region. This means that you can choose either to copy buckets on the same region or to different regions. You can also copy it to multiple destinations or a single destination bucket. Next feature is access from on-premises or VPC. Now VPC is called, uh, uh, it stands for Virtual Private Cloud. So you can access your uh, buckets from your on-premises service or you can choose to do it from a VPC as well. The next feature is uh, protect and secure your data. Uh, so Amazon S3 is designed to provide 99.99% of durability and 99.99% of availability of objects over a given year. So uh, the chances of your get data uh, getting lost is slim to none. And finally, uh, you also gain uh, visibility into your storage. So you can gain visibility through a feature called S3 storage lens. Here you can see how much memory you're using up in your S3 buckets and uh, um, predict how much you will be using and then increase your bucket size or make a new bucket, etc. You can do all those. Uh, within a feature called as S3 storage lens. 
And finally, you can analyze your data and find insights from that data stored in S3 buckets using artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. This is done with the help of either AWS services or third-party services. Now, let us move on to the core concepts of S3. So first we have buckets. It is a container to store objects within a namespace. Namespace here refers to the name of the bucket which must be globally unique. So if I have a bucket named demo bucket, nobody else can name their bucket as demo bucket. So this is what you mean by a uh, namespace. Now buckets can be considered as a general purpose file system. The buckets themselves acts as a root level directory. You can have multiple subdirectories under it where you can store objects. You can have files at different levels of the subfolders. You can either choose to have the object stored in the root directory or any of the subdirectories. The next core concept is objects. So objects are content that you are storing inside your buckets. It can include media content, JSON files, CSV files, jar files, SDK files, which can actually boot up inside the bucket. Essentially, you can store any type of objects depending on your use case. One thing to note here is that a bucket has a maximum capacity of 5 terabytes, which is pretty uh, huge. And you can have up to 100 buckets uh, within a single AWS account. Now let us move on to the next core concept, which is accessing content from S3 buckets. So you have several ways of accessing your content, that is your objects from the S3 buckets. There are uh, mainly three uh, ways that you can do it. There are also other methods as well, but these three are the important ones. So the first method is using the AWS console itself. So by using the S3 console, uh, you can access your bucket. You can also uh, do almost all the operations on a bucket without having to write any code. All you have to do is get familiar with the user interface of the AWS console. So this is what the AWS console uh, looks like. So the second method is by URL. This method works only when your bucket is set to be publicly accessible. By default, all the buckets will be set to private access. So here you have an example, uh, a syntax of a URL uh, through which you can access your uh, objects in a bucket. So this is an example of what an object that you're trying to access via URL will uh, look like. It is an HTTP URL, so it looks something like this. Uh, here the scheme is HTTP and the host name is S3. That is why uh, it is uh, followed by S3 after the HTTP colon and two forward slashes. And uh, then it is followed by a domain name, uh, which is Amazon uh, AWS dot com. And then now uh, you will have to put in the bucket name followed by the object name. So this is how you access your uh, content from S3 using URL. And the third way is by doing it programmatically. This is the most common way to access objects in S3 since most use cases will not have the bucket set to public access. You can achieve this using the Boto3 SDK, uh, which is written in Python language, and it is generally used to interact with the AWS services. Uh, so in the first line, I am instantiating an S3 client using the Boto3 library. And in the second line, I am assigning the result of the get object method to a variable called my object. The get object method here has uh, two arguments, bucket and key, where we have to pass the bucket name and the object name respectively. Now let us move on to the next topic, storage classes within S3. In the beginning, S3 had uh, no concept of storage classes. There was only one storage class and one pricing model. Over time, after S3 was being used for a wide variety of ways, AWS decided to come up with storage classes for different use cases and different access patterns of data. The image uh, shown here, uh, it basically illustrates the different types of storage classes available under S3 service. 
सो वी हैव सिक्स एट टाइप्स ऑफ स्टोरेज क्लासेस यू हैव दी एस थ्री इंटेलिजेंट टीयरिंग वेर यू कैन ऑटोमेटिकली सेव कॉस्ट बाई ऑटो टीयरिंग डेटा विथ एनी एक्सेस पैटर्न सो वेदर इट बी फ्रीक्वेंटली एक्सेस डेटा और इनफ्रीक्वेंटली एक्सेस डेटा और इट कैन बी आर्काइव डेटा विच यू जस्ट ओपन वंस इन अ मंथ और वंस इन अयर एक्सेट्रा सो एस थ्री विल ऑटोमेटिकली डिटेक्ट योर एक्सेस पैटर्न एंड अलॉट दैम इन टू द रेस्पेक्टिव स्टोरेज क्लासेस नेक्स्ट यू हैव एस थ्री स्टैंडर्ड और सो दिस इज द जनरल पर्पज स्टोरेज फॉर एक्टिव फ्रीक्वेंटली एक्सेस डेटा we also have s3 standard infrequent access data which is also called s3 standard ia it is low cost storage for data accessed uh, monthly and requires milliseconds of retrieval uh, requirements we also have a similar uh, storage uh, called s3 glacier instant retrieval so it is of lower cost than the s3 standard ia uh, and it is uh, used for data which is long lived and uh, the retrieval uh, requirements are within milliseconds next we have s3 glacier flexible retrieval so it is also a long term low cost storage for uh, mainly used for backups and archives and the retrieval uh, time uh, is from minutes to hours next we have s3 glacier deep archive so uh, this cost is lower than the s3 glacier flexible and it is basically used for rarely accessed archive data and the retrieval time is in hours next we have s3 one zone infrequent access so it is used for infrequently accessed data in a single availability zone for cost savings finally we have s3 on outposts s3 on outpost delivers object storage to on premises aws outposts environments to meet local data processing and data residency needs so this is basically used on on premises uh, servers now let us move on to the next topic which is uh, security in s3 public access is blocked by default so this is one of the security features in s3 there are some options that you can select which can make your s3 bucket public but this is deliberately done by aws for security measures next we have data protection highly durable and available guarantees encryption in transit and at rest so what this basically means is that your data will not be lost uh, the chances are very less like it's in uh, 0.0001% and uh, your data is also encrypted while it is being transmitted to uh, your applications or an, or other data centers and it is also encrypted uh, while your data uh, rests in the aws uh, data centers the next uh, security feature is access and resource based control with aws iam so iam is a service within aws it stands for identity and access management and it is used for authentication and authorization of resources to a group of users next we have auditing feature as well uh, you can access logs action based logs and set alarms also so what this essentially means is that aws natively supports access logs action based logs through a uh, aws service called aws cloud trail it also supports alarms for instance uh, if you have a certain number of uh, get requests on a certain bucket or a certain object you can set a notification uh, you can uh, do this setup using another service called aws cloud watch next we have Instra infrastructure security uh, it is built on top of the aws cloud infrastructure so it is a general uh, security measure uh, where you are leveraging the infrastructure security that is built on top of the aws cloud infrastructure all right now time to move on to the last topic of this video uh, we will be taking a look at some of the use cases of s3 firstly uh, we have database backups so this is a very common thing to do in s3 you can have periodic backups like every night every week every month etc so the next use case is website hosting 
You can use S3 to store static content like HTML files, CSS files, JavaScript files, image files, etc. Basically anything you need for your website. And the next use case is data processing pipelines. You can build an infrastructure that can ingest large amounts of data and dump it into S3 buckets. You can process your data, maybe filter it, transform it and then finally store it in S3. That's all from my side guys. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Just a quick info guys. If you wish to learn testing and make a career in it, then we have a good news for you. Intellipad provides Test Architect Master course in collaboration with IBM and Microsoft. The course link of which is given in the description below.